anxiety, stress, depression, anxiousness. You know how that feels? More and more Americans are dealing with mental health issues and many of them are turning to synthetic drugs that just cover up the problem but don't get to the root cause. Traditional Chinese medicine is an incredible practice that helps people just like you who are suffering from these types of symptoms. In fact, I have my own story and my own experience and it was Chinese medicine that brought me through and allowed me to be here to share with you how this medicine works. Whenever we experience these types of life lessons and life, have, we have these life journeys, they're designed to teach us. They're designed to raise us up to become a bigger and better person. They're designed to help us discover who we really are and to not attach ourselves to the experience. In this video today, I would like to present to you Ryan Bishop, one of my colleagues who eloquently describes what Qigong is. He has practiced Tai Chi and Qigong for many years. He's a martial artist and a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner. And the one thing that I like about him the most is that he has the ability to reverse whatever kind of negative disharmony that he's experiencing through the practice of oriental medicine. He not only lives and breathes what he teaches, but he also trains his clients, his patients, on how to get the same results. And so I would like for you to meet him firsthand and the teach the techniques that he's going to share with you here in this video are things that you can start doing on your own. If you're interested in doing something different for yourself and helping you get on to a better lifestyle, I highly encourage that you would seek out a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner in order to achieve those life goals. So join me in this discussion with Ryan Bishop, licensed acupuncturist, about what is Qigong. And it evolved for me since I was a child. I learned about it doing martial arts, um, Qigong mainly to help regulate not only my mind, but also help my body heal faster. If I was training and I got hurt, I needed a way to direct the energy flow and find that, that balance. And so with the, with the Qigong's practicing, with the Qigong practices, you know, energy, it, um, there's a saying, energy follows mind or intention. So wherever we think, wherever we, we think or um, visualize that energy flowing, it's going to go into that area. So it's, very, it's a very eloquent type of practice. It's also a very ancient type of practice. But I think that we uh, should all just kind of like define the, the, the basics of... Okay. Chinese medicine and Qigong because Chinese, Tai Chi and Qigong is just one of the modalities that helps us, you know, bring our body back into balance. So what yeah. is Qi and how does it affect anxiety and depression or how does anxiety and depression affect the flow of Qi? Okay. So Qi, also known as life force energy or prana, the thing that separates you and I from a, a dead body or a corpse is life, life force energy flowing through us. And in the ancient Orient or the Eastern philosophies and understanding, they spent many, many thousands of years studying and practicing this. And Qi Gong is, means the practice, the art of practicing energy work. So we have our physical being, our physical body, you know, our organs, our blood, our cells, all that stuff, but we also have this energy body. And this energy body can be multiple names, um, but with the practice of Qigong, we can help to harmonize the physical and energy body, keeping our minds calm. And with the, the effect that depression and anxiety have on the energy flow in the body is it causes stagnation, it causes restriction. And what that does is when we are when think of a river that stops flowing, it becomes stagnant. It becomes like um, the water becomes uh, putrefied or turbid. And when we practice movement arts with the breath, it's very important to breathe properly. 
we can enhance the flow of energy through us and help to um, get rid of some of the ailments that plague society. So how is this different from regular exercise? Because, you know, as in our society, we're so used to running and jogging and, and, you know, lifting heavy weights and exerting a lot of energy. But to me, like, I look at Tai Chi and I think, oh, it's so slow, it's going to make me fall asleep. How is this different from regular exercise? So there's a, there's a point of view in Eastern medicine that if you overextend yourself and your body's not getting the nourishment it needs, it's going to start pulling from its its sort its um primary energy sources such as the kidneys such as you know other organs in the body mainly the kidneys and when we're born with a certain amount from our mother and our father certain amount of um this primordial energy right and so what happens is if we're not if our digestive system isn't working properly we're not eating the nutrition that we need to support and and, and sustain the physical body the body's gonna have this homeostatic balance it's going to pull anywhere it can from you know what it has so if we're not getting if we're not giving it the energy and the the, and the the chi it needs it's going to pull from the sources and then over time we start to have deficiency problems we start to have um, degenerative disease problems because our body's being taxed however if we practice um qigong is the foundation of eastern medicine and the foundation of Tai Chi. Tai Chi is a form of Qigong, and it's more a little more dynamic because there's more movements, and it also incorporates self-defense techniques and how to adjust according, provided someone is attacking you, and that's where the movements are very uh, precise. But the way that Qigong differs from like our Western mentality. I'm going to go out there and run a 10,000 miles and sweat and just be completely exhausted. I'm going to do 10,000, 100 push-ups. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to lift these weights until my muscles and I can't even bend my arms because they're so sore. Yeah, it's going to grow size of the body, but what it's doing, it's, it's pulling, it's taxing the body sources. That's why like these, these bodybuilders, they have to eat so much because they constantly need to recharge themselves. So with the movements of Qigong and, and using the breath, not only do we get our nutrition from the food, we also get nutrition from the air we, they, that we breathe, right? So we can go a couple of weeks without eating. Some people, some people can't, but a lot of it's mental. <laughs> um, we can't go very long without drinking, but we can go, you know, a couple days without drinking anything, start to degenerate. But how long can we go without breathing? Not very long, right? 10 minutes tops and you start to have brain damage. So knowing that, our breath separates, that's our bridge. So if we can practice techniques that have been practiced for thousands of years with study, like constant practice and study, and we apply those in our life, we can enhance our health, we can activate the energy to move through us so these ailments these symptoms such as anxiety and depression those aren't the root causes of what's going on there's something causing that and it's a stagnation it's a deficiency it's you know and not only in the physical body but also in the mental body we have multiple bodies we're multi-dimensional multi-layered we have a physical body, we have our ethereal body, we have our astral body, our mental body, our causal body, all these things you can understand and look up. There's a lot of information now. Yeah, they correlate with our chakra centers and the Eastern medicine, the way that the, the meridians and the energies flow. We know a little bit. We don't have to know that into detail. Although, yes, I do and you do as physicians of this medicine, but to simple practice, we know that when we breathe in, energy comes in us. When we breathe out, we're getting rid of stagnation. We're getting rid of stuff that no longer serves us, right? So we eat, we're getting in stuff that tastes good, hopefully that's nourishing us. And we go to the bathroom to get rid of stuff that no longer serves us. It's just a, there's a very simple correlation here. So with the Qigong practicing, we can use our breath and simple movements holding our body in certain postures that open up certain energy channels to allow that energy to flow. And, and when it's done consistently, it's consistent. It's not like, 
I'm just gonna do it today and then I'm gonna be fixed all. It's not a magic pill. It's it's a lifestyle. Mm. You no, know, it's it's we have a choice to be depressed. We have a choice. Yeah, all those things happen to us in life. We have a choice to replay that over and over in our mind or practice something that's going to make us feel better. I'm, gl- I'm glad you mentioned that because, it, you know, it is a practice. And get the West, Western has a different way of treating those who ha- go through anxiety and depression. They treat it through um, psychosis, right? They um, are often prescribed the medication to help them get through that moment. However, uh, Chinese medicine looks at it differently. So can you, you, you talked a lot, a little bit about stagnation. What, um, when anxiety and depression stagnate, like for example, somebody who's going through PTSD or has experienced a traumatic event in their life and they, 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 they're living with that memory of that traumatic event in their life for over, you know, years and years and years. And all they've been given are medication to kind of deal with that psychosis. Like how, how effective or how real is this breath technique and qigong in helping people break through those challenging moments well okay so it's only effective if per, if people practice it so if, I, if i practice it say you have post traumatic stress and i'm practicing practicing it if you're in my vicinity, you might feel better, but when you leave, you're not gonna, you're just gonna go back into your old ways. You have to take the initiative. You have to want that. You have to want to change. And, and people were waking up. Hey, everybody, thank you. Welcome to this wonderful, wakeful life state. So we're waking up and a lot of us have not been taught these proper these techniques these simple it's very simple it's not difficult if it's too difficult we don't want to do it so let's keep it simple right so as you inhale you can do it with your hands and do a little simple practice so like when you're starting to get this repetitive thoughts these these your mind is just going and going it's focusing on something that is not serving you it's a we replay this over and over and it causes us this this energy to become stagnant or us to become upset or depressed we can snap ourselves out of it, provided we're aware and we're conscious enough that it's happening. And a very simple way to do that is just, you know, you can stand, you can sit, but make sure your spine is nice and straight, but you're comfortable. You don't want to be like all rigid to where, you know, you, you want to be nice, relaxed, but good alignment. And we can just very gently, just clap your hands. There's this EFT, right? You can clap here. Remember your breath. You're breathing in. You're relaxing your shoulders. Smack, 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 smack. Now, rub them, rub them, rub them. Feel the warmth in your palms. Feel your breath. You're breathing still. Circular motions. And then now pause. And now bring your hands towards your chest, towards your heart. They call this prayer position, but we can also say that this posture is balancing our left and our right aspects of our brain and our body just by touching our hands. We have a lot of nerve endings in our hands. So when they touch, we're completing a circuit, so to say, in the system. So as we breathe, take three deep breaths here and just pay attention as you press gently your palms together. You'll start to feel the warmth. You start to feel the pressure of the skin. You're breathing into your body, feeling your hands. And what this does is taking you out of your mind, bringing you into the body, right? So now you can open up your palms, keeping your fingertips together. And now feel that space. Pay attention to the space between your palms. Continue to breathe. That's easily forgotten, breathing. Very very easily forgotten because we're focusing on all this other stuff that we're doing, but the breath, as long as it stays in a consistent flow and rhythm, the energy does not stagnate. As long as we're inhaling and we're absorbing the energy into our bodies, We're filling up with vital energy. We exhale, exhale it all out. 
we're squeezing all the, the stagnation out of us. So something that simple, just, and then just breathe and just pay attention. It brings you in the moment, takes you out of your mind. Now, with the different forms of these energy practices, obviously, some people might have a tendency, like myself, to get bored. I don't want to just stand here and do this. I want to do other stuff. And that's what has um, brought me to more of the dynamic flow of the Tai Chi forms. And, you know, there's other um, longer forms of Qigong standing forms that anybody can do from a child to an elderly person sitting in a wheelchair. You know, we can move the arms in certain ways to incorporate this rhythm, this flow in our life. And, and not only are we opening up and strengthening our shoulders and our arms, but we're opening up the channels, the meridians, the energy channels that flow to our fingertips, opening up what is called the qua, the, the roundness of our shape. The energy likes, kind of going on a tangent here, but chi, energy, prana, it likes round shape, right? That's why our earth is round. You blow a bubble, turns into a round bubble, you know, a sphere. And so when we hold this, I'm not going to do it in this video. I'll, I'll demonstrate it in, a, in another time. But basically, there's a round shape that we can keep with our arms, armpits open, the roundness and the bend in our elbows, the roundness in our hands, the roundness in our legs. We can start to as we breathe and practice these forms, we can have this tangible experience of that life force energy that we're playing with. It becomes like a dance. Mm. And then if we, do, if we do this enough, after about a month or so, three weeks to a month, if you practice a little bit every day, it becomes part of your lifestyle and you do it naturally. Like if I'm breathing just through my chest, like most people in our society do, I'm neglecting a lot part of my lungs. So I'm stagnating a lot of energy in my abdomen, might have digestive problems, bowel movements, constipation issues. And so just by sitting up, breathing, expanding the lower abdomen and really engaging the diaphragm to expand, filling up like a bellows and exhaling, allowing all that expansion to be pressed and squeezed out of you. It's not like I'm pressing out. I'm it's very gentle, but you are engaging. You are engaging those muscles gently, not intensely, not like I'm wanting to build my muscle really strong. No, it's you want to just gauge because your body, your physical body, the reason why we engage like the per perineum, peritoneum, the sphincter muscles, the, the, they call them bandhas in yoga. Qigong at practice, they're called locks. It's very simple. Let's lock the energy in because your physical body is the vessel. And as we breathe in, and we're using visualizations, it becomes a, a tangible experience to where now you're filling yourself up with this prana, this energy, this life force, the chi. And if we have a weak sphincter muscle, then that energy leaks out of us. And then we have, you know, a lot, some people will get hemorrhoids, some people will get other issues down there. Um, so there's ways to to balance that out just by engaging some of those areas. And as we're breathing, we're filling up. So what can, take, what can our audience take away with this as far as like, you know, two or three different practices they can do on a daily basis um, to help them break through? Uh, we have to, for people that, that are, we were talking about people that are depressed and people that have post-traumatic stress, right? So yes. First of all, depression in Eastern medicine, <clears throat> we see that as a stagnation of the chi of the liver, liver energy. The liver has this ability to hold the blood and blood and, and chi are married together. Blood is the mother, chi is the driving force of the blood. The blood carries the chi, the chi moves the blood. So they're interrelated. So the liver is a very large organ in our body. And when we sleep, it's supposed to, you know, filters all the blood. There's like 500 different functions that the liver does with enzymes and stuff. Although in qi and Eastern medicine, it's very qi and blood related. And um, if you feel yourself getting depressed, 
first of all, what are you putting in your mouth? What are you eating? Mm. You eating cheeseburgers and stuff like that that might taste good going in, but once it gets in and gets into your cells, your body's like, what the hell do I do now? I got to figure this out. First of all, let's get rid of the waste. And then you, oh, I'm just exhausted. You know, you feel because you're not feeding your body the nutrition it needs. Mm. So with that said, if you're eating good, and you're drinking your smoothies every morning with fresh vegetables and your hemp protein and, you know, all your, your good vitamins and minerals you're getting and you're still feeling weak, maybe there's an issue with your digestive system. Maybe your body's not assimilating and getting those, that nutrition. It's not breaking down properly. So we got to work with that. Um, that's really important for people that are depressed, uh, but, but if there's something like a trauma that happened outside of our control that affected us and we're reliving that over and over and it's causing us not to be able to function in society and be, you know, a functioning individual, then we need to, we need to address that. And, you know, it might take some time, but that's okay. Time is our only currency here, Right. Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's our currency time money all that stuff is fake although it runs the way society is however time we spend time and what do we spend our time doing do i spend my time worrying about childhood things or things that happened to me that caused me to be nervous or afraid or do i take my time and apply it to where I feel more confident doing things that help me to be more, wow, I couldn't walk up these 10 flights of stairs. So I'm just going to take the elevator. No, I'm going to push myself to walk up these five flights of stairs and do that over and over. And then eventually wow, I can get up to those 10 flights of stairs. It's like having this discipline in yourself. Who's going to push me? Myself, right? Connect connection with this energy. If I'm, yeah. So food, so food is, is an important practice, eating your smoothies and also your breath work is a, is an important practice. And this is something that you can practice anywhere. So when we're talking about, you know, what someone could do maybe when they're in the waiting room or they're, you know, in the car or when they're just about to feel like, you know, this attack of anxiety, come on, you were, you were showing us these things that you can do with your hands and um, maybe holding like the claw what, what else do you recommend somebody can do like at any point in time? Any point in time. Brilliant. Okay. So first of all, you got to know that you're having this attack, right? Hopefully it's not too late, but when it gets to that point, again, sit up nice and tall, exhale all your air out, blow it all out through the mouth, through the nose, just get rid of it all. Before you inhale, hold that space completely empty. Take your right thumb, plug your right nostril, inhale through the left nose, completely breathe in, swallow that down, hold it, plug the left nostril with the right ring finger and exhale through the right nostril. all the way out when you're ready to breathe back in through the right nostril. Swallow that down, plug the right and exhale through the left. And what is this doing? So this is, that was one round. Okay. So you want to, this is called alternative, alternative nostril breathing. This balances the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. So one side of the body, I can go into details, but I'm not going to at this time. I just want to start practicing these practices. So what we're doing when we're breathing in the left nostril, we're holding, we're breathing out and in the right nostril, holding and exhaling. We're balancing our brain balancing our the energy in our body in, in, in um, the practice of, of yoga and stuff they call this 
um, the Shashuma channel, which is in Eastern medicine is our thrusting vessel or the, the Chong, the centered vessel of the body. Not only there's, we don't, we have a tendency to see it as one central vessel or channel. However, there's polarities to everything, right? There's positive and negative. So this is balancing the positive and negative in the system, very simply. And it's something that we can do anytime, anybody can do. If you notice, one of your nostrils is more clogged than the other. If you notice that, some people are, you know, I can't breathe in. You spend more time on that side. Also, like say, right, let's say my right side is a little more clogged. I'm going to switch up my hands. I'm going to plug. I'm going to plug that left nostril with whatever finger. I'm going to put my other hand into my armpit. Same side of the nose that's clogged. Same side of the armpit. I'm just going to take a few deep breaths out of that one-sided nostril that's clogged with the hand in the armpit. And you'll notice if you practice this, you'll notice it start to clear up. What's the significance of, of the hand under the armpit? Good question. So the significance is that the armpit in Eastern medicine, there's a channel for the heart. It's the first, first point of the heart channel. Heart one is right up underneath there. The palm of the hand, pericardium points, right? Lao Gong. So we put that in heart one. And what that does is it, it's opening up this channel. It's making a connection. So if there's stagnation, there's a, there's a, think of like circuits, right? Or, or, or wires, energy flowing through these wires. If that wire is lacerated or if the wire is not connected, you're not going to be able to turn your light on, right? So we got to make this connection. So that's certain practice. There's other um, points in the body that I'll show you in time to come that also do that. But this is very, sim very simple to balance alternative nostril breathing. So heart, heart channel, heart one, because it's related to that emotion of anxiety and fear. Is that the only reason? No, it's not the only reason, but that's, that's one reason, you know, there's, this is what's great about these practices is that, yeah, there's, um, there's multiple levels and layers and it's, you start out very simple, be simple, be, if it's too difficult, we're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. But if, you can, wow, sit up and just exhale all your air, cover one nostril, and you can breathe alternative nostril breathing that anybody can do, and that is very effective. And we went a little further. If you have a blockage in one side, it's a blockage in your sympathetic or your parasympathetic nervous system. Both each nostril, left side, I believe, is the parasympathetic nervous system. The right side is the sympathetic. So sympathetic, most people are running in this high fight or flight. Oh my God, my adrenal glands are pumping. Oh my God, there's, um, oh, there's stuff going on. Oh, I'm stressed. There's all this anxiety, right? So I'm going to balance that out. Parasympathetic is more like, oh, I'm relaxed. My food is digesting. You know, it's the opposite, right? There's duality. There's, that's the balance. Within yourself, within myself, there's masculine and feminine energy, right? There's this dualistic approach. There's a polarity. And when we understand that, we can balance it out through very simple techniques. Awesome. That's what Qigong for me. And, you know, it's, it's not just one thing, though. When we're practicing holistic therapies and natural stuff, it's, a, it's why acupuncture, we use herbs, we use diet, we use Qigong. It's not just like you come in, I stick needles in you, you go home and everything's fine. No, it's, a, it's an mind opening process it's a heart opening process it's it's a process disease is a process to become ease or harmonic or healthy it's also a process every morning i have a blender i make a delicious smoothie in my nice license to chill because it's awesome and it's delicious and what i what that does is i put in really good stuff it's not just I'm not adding sugar. I'm not adding like, you know, all this crap. I'm adding handfuls of greens, asparagus, avocados with the seed, 
you know, a lemon with the pith on it, cut off the skin, but you have the white pith, the seeds of the lemon, um, hemp seeds, chia seeds. I use a company called Standard Process that is a whole food supplement company that's been around since 1929 with some of the best protein. And it's, it's all plant-based, you know, and so I, and I feel great. I think clearly my body heals quicker. Mm. So that's one thing. And then practicing, opening up, stretching out, doing these, these, these postures, these asanas, they call them in yoga, but then applying that with the Qigong, it's a full array, a full rounded experience. First of all, I don't get bored because I have kind of a short, like I get bored easy. So I like to do a lot of different things. You know, I'm a, I do extreme sports. I, you know, do a lot of fun, exciting things. And a lot of people will ask me, oh, are you afraid to do that? Are you scared to do that? And there is a healthy fear. Yeah. I'm not going to jump off of a building without a parachute or something, because I know I'm going to splat to the ground. I'm not going to jump out in front of a car because I know if it hits me, I'm probably going to be, but if I have a parachute on and there's a plane and someone was, you know, I'm going to jump out the plane and I know there's a 50, 50 chance, whatever. It's, you know what I mean? So I, know mean. I don't let that fear guide me. I, I, I acknowledge that there might be, you know, be aware of this, but then we are here to experience. What are we experiencing? Absolutely. That's it. I could go on and on and on about this, you know, topic. It's like my passion talking about Chinese medicine, but you know, I just want to thank you so much for the time that you have given us because you are just a fountain of knowledge. And I want to share with the audience that I invite you to visit Acupuncture Bishop on Facebook. There are articles after articles after articles about Chinese medicine, Qigong, Tai Chi. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that, just go there first, like his page and, you know, reach out to him, give him a phone call, send him an email. In the future, we're going to be talking more about plant-based medicine and, um, you know, food therapy and doing some practices that will encourage you to, you know, hone your skills and being able to um, control your breath work and more you know, tips and, and tricks on how we can integrate you more into the practice of Chinese medicine so that way you have an option and you have a choice and you don't have to just stick with one type of medicine that you know, nature has given you everything that you so need in order to exist and you know, be who you are created to be. So just before we go, um, Ryan, do you have any closing remarks or you know, mantras or anything you wanna share with the audience before we close this conversation? Sure. Um, something that helps me is if you're feeling, you know, we all go through these different emotions. We all feel a depression every now and then. It's just natural. It's, it's you know, but to get to, to acknowledge that and not get stuck and repeat those thoughts over and over, that's key. So something that's very simple, do this 10 times a day, 10 times a day. If you do this 10 times a day, your life will change. And then it takes about 21 days, three weeks. Keep doing it though for the rest of your life. When you wake up in the morning, the first thoughts, or okay, the second thoughts, because you, whatever your first thoughts are, those second thoughts, come to that awareness and tell yourself, I am full with positive energy. I am abundant with positive energy. This vessel is filled with positive energy. I'm full of positive energy. I am full of positive, abundant energy. Just keep repeating this to yourself. And then you will have positive and abundant energy. It's, 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 it's called, uh, it's basically we're programming ourselves. This is a supercomputer there, right? We have all these programs. This is a, you know, it remembers, it's memory, it's all this stuff. So what are we remembering? You remember, am I waking up? Oh, another day. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to. You're not going to have a good day if that's how you're programming yourself. Look in the mirror, look at yourself, smile, say, I love you, thank you. Oh, my body is the way it is. Maybe it's not the way I want it, but thank you for giving me the opportunity. Now I can create it the way I want it. You know, if we have extra weight and we're just like, oh man, I'm just feeling this way. Change that. See yourself how you want to see yourself. 
I'm radiant, abundant energy full of positive affirmations. I am love. I am grateful. Be grateful. Wake up in the morning. I'm grateful for being able to breathe this fresh air. I'm grateful for being able to drink this fresh water. Look at the sun. Good morning, sun. Good morning, birds, or whatever. If you're in the city, the, there's wind out there. There's, you know, there's clouds, whatever. There's still sun. Just breathe it in. Be thankful. Be thankful for that. Because when we're thankful and we're grateful, more of the greatness comes to us. And that's, that's from true. personal experience. Very true. You know? I hope Ryan Bishop's message today inspires you to try something different, to implement the exercises that he shared with us. And I hope that you will decide to seek out a Chinese medicine practitioner to help you through whatever challenges that you might be going through. My name is Antonika Chanel, and thank you so much for joining me in this episode of Ancient Wisdom, Modern Design. Please like and share this video, and I would love to hear your comments about what Ryan Bishop shared with us and what else you would like to hear on my channel.